This is just one piece of a multi-part course. If you're interested in more, check out tunefiles.com. I'm now going to talk about universal behaviors. So up to this point, we've set up our character, we've applied tags, and we've applied certain handles to different areas of the character. There are parameters you can control while animating that allow you to alter how all this works. You can do this with individual layers as well, which will override the universal animation settings that you apply within the record tab. But we'll talk about that in the next video. For now, we're just going to focus on universal behaviors. So to access these, we first need to go over here to the record panel. Now, once in record, you're going to want to click on your character on the timeline. You'll see the timeline right down here and we have our puppet right here. Click once and on the right where your properties are, you'll gain access to all of the behaviors for this puppet. And behaviors will automatically come on depending on what you have going on. As an example, if we did not apply any dragger handles, you wouldn't see dragger here. There'd be no reason for it. Same goes for lip sync or physics or anything that we have assigned. We can, of course, manipulate here. There are some behaviors that need to be manually added once you set up your rig a certain way. And we'll cover that in some later videos. So for instance, let's start with the dragger. If I come in, you have the ability to turn it off completely. So right now, if I come in and click and drag, I can drag things around. But if I disable it, you can see if I come in and try to click and drag, I just can't do it. The other thing about this is you can change these parameters on the fly. So let's say five seconds into the animation, you suddenly no longer want the ability to control the arms with the dragger. You can turn it off and it will turn off in that part of the animation. Now, the other thing we can do is just turn that back on. Let's say as we move the arm, we really don't like that it just stays in midair after you move it. Well, you'll see right down here, after move is set to hold in place. So it's doing it for that reason. If we click on this, we can turn return to rest on to have it actually animate back to its default position. So if we come over here and move this, you can see that it quickly drops back to the side. Now, you can change how long it takes for this to happen. You can see right now it's set to 0.2 seconds. But if I changed it to, let's say, 3 seconds, and then we click and drag and move this up, we can see it takes 3 seconds for it to return to its position. So you can do all sorts of things like that if you wish. So I'm just going to come in and put this to 0.5. It seems about right. And I'll keep it at return to rest. So whenever we do this, it'll just kind of go back to default. Now your eye gaze has to deal with how the eyes are being controlled. So here we have the camera input controlling the eyes by default. And I demonstrated that a little bit, but let's turn that off and let's turn on mouse and touch input. So now if I come around here and I click, you can see he's going to look where I click or at least in the general direction of where I click which is again, interesting and useful. It just depends on how you want to animate out your eye gaze. You can also do keyboard input. So if you wanted him to go based on your arrow keys, which is what I'm using right now, you can see that I'm doing that. You just push the arrow key and he'll look in the direction you want him to look. You have smoothing as well as camera strength and then the strength of the mouse, touch and keyboard. And these all work the same. It just depends on how you want to control your character. So let me turn my camera on once again. And I'm just going to set the rest pose. Now, if I come down here, I'm going to look at first the camera input, make sure I turn that on. And I'm just going to set the rest pose again. Now, if I come down here and you can see right now how my eyes are reacting when I move my pupils around. If I increase the strength of this, you can see that they're going completely out of bounds. 
And the same, or the opposite, I should say, occurs when you scale it back. So if you don't want the eyes to move as far as they are, you can rein that in and make it more subtle. Now, it'll go based on the boundaries of your eyeballs. So if you have it 100%, the boundary will be the eyeballs, or at least it should be. But if you want more control, if you need more movement, you can definitely turn that on or off or increase it. Now, you also have snap eye gaze down here as well. So let me just turn the camera off here for a moment. And I'm just going to do that. Let me turn on mouse and touch input again. You can see how it's sort of snapping back and forth. And you could come in here and change that duration. So when I click, he looks for 0.5 seconds and then looks back. So if I could go... So if I go to, let's say, point 0.2, you see it's really quick. He just boom, boom, <laughs> looks back and forth. So you can go in and adjust those parameters right there. Your face has to deal with the camera input mostly, so let me turn that back on. Now, as you can see, I'm moving my head back and forth just by tilting, as I am. But if I come down here, and let's increase the head position strength to, like, 200%, you can see hopefully it's easy to tell that it's much more forgiving i can really move it around and if i put it back to zero it's much less forgiving i can't even really move it up or down so you can go in and adjust just how much you want that to be affected the head scale is also the same for instance if i cr increase this if i go towards the camera you can see it increases the scale of the head and if i go back we go back out just like that. And we can come down here and adjust the head tilt strength. So again, if you really want it to be really tilty, you can go in and do all that. And your eyebrow strength is the same. So if you really want those eyebrows to be exaggerated, you can do that if you want them less exaggerated. And we can do eyelid strength as well, which I'll get to in a separate section. I'll cover eyelids in its own little section. But all of that can be controlled here, as you can see. And on the bottom, you can even choose if you want your eyes to blink together. You can see I'm blinking my eyes right now. But if we come in here, we can turn it so that you can do one at a time. Or at least you should be able to. Yeah, there we go. So you can do all of that very easily. Also keep in mind, as you make these changes, you can come in here and click on these X's to reset your parameters. Just in case you decide that you don't want those changes. Down here, you have lip sync. You can look at those options. Basically, it's just going to track your audio input. As long as you have your microphone on, that's really the only way you can automatically lip sync this way. And then you have your physics, which deal with your draggers. And you can come down here. We can turn these on so we can adjust them first and foremost. So you can see that's on. And then let's just adjust, for instance, the wind strength. You can see as I do that, it's like really blowing it out. Um, we can increase the variation of the wind. We can adjust the direction um, going that way, this way. The gravity. I mean, there's so many little things you can adjust. The dangle stiffness. So if you really want it to be really, really bouncy, you can just really play with these settings and blow them out if you want. And you also have some other things down here as well, such as collision, when triggered, when should it start, and the weight you have all that you can adjust here as well. So there's a lot you can adjust with those physics. And again, I could go through every single one, but I feel like once you kind of get the feel for it, you'll understand how it all works. And the last thing we have down here are the transform properties and the triggers. I'll get the triggers in its own little video. For the transform properties, just know that you can come in and you can move the character, you can scale the character, and you can rotate and do opacity settings. And this is also where you could animate the character moving across the screen and different things like that. So that's a little bit about how you can adjust universal behaviors inside of Character Animator. Up next, we're going to look at specific layer behaviors, which override these behaviors, but give you more control. To view the rest of this course or gain access to the source files, visit tunefiles.com.